Okay, is everyone sufficiently lost? Just nod, nod, yes? Okay, 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 cool. We're now just looking at perplexity, okay? And um, perplexity, I'm going to simplify it. We're just looking at one source, one random variable called x, okay? And x can take on a bunch of outcomes. And um, based on that random variable, you will have a different perplexity or a different entropy, okay? And like I said, I'm just going to scribble it out here just so that it's clear. If you have perplexity um, and you've got entropy, entropy is also defined formally. You can go and look, look on Wikipedia how you actually write out the entropy for a source. But I'm just going to write it out for you because it, it really helps. So it's the minimum number of bits per outcome to encode source x on average. That's the entropy, okay? This will make sense in a second, okay? And then perplexity, I've told you, is this, you can think of it as like, out of how many things am I choosing? None of that made sense. That's absolutely fine. So we're going to do a quick little thought experiment. Okay, I'm going to stand in this room and I'm going to roll a dice. The dice's name is x, okay? X, we're going to change the dice a little bit. We'll start with maybe two sides, then we'll go to one side, and then maybe we'll go to four sides, so the dice can change, okay? It might be a one-sided dice, maybe a six-sided dice or whatever, okay? You guys are going to move over and go and sit in another room, okay? And I'm going to stand in this room, and I'm going to roll the dice, okay? And I'm going to check which side does this dice fall on, right? And I'm going to label the sides A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay. Okay. I'm going to check what side does it fall on. And then what I have to do is I have to send you a message in the other room and tell you which side the dice landed on. Okay. Depending on the dice, we're going to have different perplexity and entropy values. Okay. If it's a very complicated dice, in quotes, then I'm going to have to send many bits with my little telegram engine in order to communicate to you which side the dice landed on, okay? If it's a more simple dice, then I don't have to send, um, then it's a, a, a low entropy situation. Uh, you won't have that many choices to make, and I will use less bits in order to communicate this to you. Uh, let's just do this, okay? We start with a very simple dice. This dice just has two sides, A and B. A and B, okay? And I can roll this dice and it lands on each of the sides with the equal probability 0 0.5 or 0 0.5, okay, for side A or B. Okay, now you guys are in that other room. How many bits do I need in order to tell you which side the dice landed on? It's got two sides. Oh, one bit. Just one bit, right? I'm just sending a 0 or a 1 depending on whether it's side A or B. This needs to make sense. Yes, not, not, not. Okay, this is baby stuff, but it will make sense. And, okay, so if you use these probabilities and you plug it into the definition of, of entropy, then you actually see that it's one bit, and that makes sense, because it takes one bit to send it through. Out of how many things are we choosing, if I've got a two-sided dice and I roll it, and the two sides are uh, equally probable? We're choosing out of two things. It's A or B, okay? And we see that in the perplexity, that the perplexity ends up being two. Okay, great stuff. It's a little bit dumb, but okay. Let's simplify the dice. The dice has one side. Okay, it has an A, nothing else. How many bits do I need to communicate to you in the other room? Zero. Zero. I don't have to communicate any bits. You just hear the dice landing in this room. You hear, oh, the dice landed, and you shout out A, because there's only one side. This is the dumb example for a single-sided dice with uh, one side called A, okay? How many bits do I need to transmit? I transmit zero bits, okay? And out of how many things are we choosing? We're choosing out of one thing. There's only one side. Okay, cool. This will make sense in a second why we're going through this really dumb example, okay? Okay, get a new dice. This dice has four sides, A, B, C, and D. A, B, C, and D. Also equally probable, okay? How many bits do I now need to tell you which side this dice landed on? Okay, okay. There's, there's four possible outcomes, so you need two bits. Okay, two to the power two is four. Is that right? I can submit a zero, zero if it's A. I can submit a zero, one if it's B. I can submit a one, zero if it's C. Or I can submit 
a transmitter one one if it's D. So I need two bits. Does that make sense? Okay, perfect. Cool. Now let's look at the interesting one. We're still going to roll a four-sided dice, but now we're going to do something interesting, which is the dice aside won't have equal probabilities. Okay, some will be more, more probable than others. Okay? So we, here we've got a dice where side A lands with a probability of 70%, and B, C, and D uh, lands with a probability of 0 0.1. How many bits do we now need to transmit on average to the other room? Okay. It gets a little bit complicated because you need to think about this. But what's happening is that um, this side A lands most of the time. So most of the time you would actually know that it's side A without me transmitting many bits. Right? If you just had to guess, you would say, oh, it's side A. But maybe if it's B, C, or D, I need to transmit something something special okay and now this is where where it gets interesting so I won't need two bits okay because most of the time it's just side A um, but I need to transmit something it's not just always landing on A okay and this is where the definition of entropy comes in so the definition of entropy says that on average for this source using the best encoding that I can it will take 1.35678 bits on average to transmit the source uh, to, to tell you which side it landed on. Okay, um, and there's ways to construct that code. It's pretty nice. We don't have to get get, get into that. Um, but the point is that entropy basically tells you, okay, cool, this thing is slightly skewed and it's not equal. Out of how many things are we choosing? We're not really choosing out of four things because most of the time. If you think about this as like a little weighted branch thing, most of the time we're just selecting A. Okay, so we're not really choosing out of four things. It's a weighted choice. And since we're mostly choosing out of A, in this case, it turns out that perplexity is 2.56. Okay, which means that I'm choosing out of 2.56 things on average when I'm in that other room. Okay, does this, does this intuitively just make sense to you? Okay, it's a little bit weird. Let's look at one more example. Uh, so this is another kind of extreme example. And this example ends up, we're still, we still have a four-sided dice, okay? But most of the time it's outcome A, and B, C, and D are very, very unlikely, okay? And now it's getting close to that case where we just had a single event, a dice always landing on A, right? So it's, it's it's almost zero bits that it takes for me to communicate to you what's happening because most of the time you can just guess that it will land on side A. Um, and out of how many things are you choosing? You're choosing out of almost just one thing, maybe one, 0 0.1826 for the other options. But they're so light on this little diagram, you can't even see the lines. Okay. Another example. This is a, an example where we have two outcomes, A and B, and C and D has very, very small probability. And you can see that, okay, well, this will take probably just more than one bit, and we've got more than, uh, just more than two options in what, uh, to choose from. Okay. Does this make sense? I just showed you a bunch of pictures, and now you understand perplexity and entropy. What the fudge does this have to do with language? Okay. Um, so the point here is that you can actually think if I calculate um, a perplexity and I get a perplexity of six, someone tells me, tell me how should I interpret that? Given your newfound knowledge, I train a language model, I get my thetas, I apply it on some test data, and I get a perplexity of six. How should I actually think about that given your intuition that you now have for entropy and perplexity? Something like uh, on average you have to choose from six different words. That's right. That's exactly right. What you're saying is, according to my training model, in, when I apply to this test data, to predict the next words, I'm looking in a weighted way at only six options for the next current word. Okay. That's really nice. It's quite a concrete way of actually thinking what the fudge does perplexity mean. It, it actually encodes the, you know, average, the, the weighted number of choices that I need to look at. In the in the in the next step 
And the nice thing is if I have a good language model, it will tell me you don't have to look at that many options. The fewer options I need to look at, the better my language model is. Okay, does that make sense? Yep, yep, yep. Cool. So it's quite interesting to ask what is the entropy or the perplexity of, of written English, right? How many bits do I need to encode the next word or how many choices am I looking at when I'm considering the next word? And so Claude Shannon, he, he, you guys know who this is, right? The father of information theory. He came up with the whole field and then solved everything in a single paper as well. Well, the biggest challenges. It's a very good way to make an academic career, right? You create a field and then solve all of its problems quickly. Um, anyway, he has a very, very nice paper um, that's very accessible. You can actually read it quite, quite easily, most of you, where he tried to estimate what is the entropy of English, like written English. So instead of looking at, um, at words, he looked at the per letter entropy of, of, of English. So he, he tried to predict the next letter. Okay. Um, and he constructed this um, interesting experiment where he would actually start with a letter and then ask a bunch of people what do you think is the next letter coming in the sentence? Okay. And then based on how many guesses it took for the average human being to guess the next letter, he basically came up with a bunch of math that um, allowed him to estimate the, the, the entropy of written English. And his estimate is somewhere between 0 0.6 bits and 1.3 bits for the per letter entropy rate of written English. It's probably a low estimate. It's probably a little bit higher because he only used one single um, text of, of English. I can't remember what he used, um, but he had people read, um, read a book and then came up with that estimate. Um, but it's quite interesting. Okay, let's quickly do this. Uh, let's just do the experiment. Um, Okay, I'll just do the, the Shannon experiment. I'll start with a letter. I've got a sentence in my head. Okay, I've got a sentence in my head. And we're just quickly going to uh, reconstruct the sentence in my head. I'll, I'll give you the first letter. Okay, cool. T. No one say anything. Guess the next le letter. Um, one of you, guess the next letter. H. Okay, you're right. Okay, it's H. And that took one guess. Very nice. Okay. Um, someone else, the next letter, E. Okay, cool, that was one guess again. Okay, cool. Uh, next letter, space. space, that was one guess. Okay, cool. So it's almost zero bits at the moment because I don't have to transmit anything. Okay, cool. Um, next letter, w. W, wrong, B, wrong, N, N. N wrong. Wrong. A. a is a dumbass, uh, dumbass case. I'm not writing that down. I'm not <laughs> counting A. Uh, okay, cool. No. D. Uh, D. No. L. No. S. No. I think we've had B. M. Yes. Okay. Ten. Ten guesses for M. Okay. Uh, so that's a ten guess situation. This was one. This was one. This was one. Okay, cool. Next letter. Oh, no, wrong. A. Right. Okay, so that was two guesses. Okay, next letter. N. N, that's right. Okay, cool. So you guys get the point, right? We're just... Okay, cool. Dunk, 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 and it continues. Okay. Now, you got stuck on M. That was sad. Okay. But on average, it actually is re relatively easy to guess the... The next lecture, uh, the next letter, and he used this strategy to quantify the per letter entropy or the per letter perplexity of um, of written English. Excellent, cool. You guys now understand entropy and perplexity.